AI art generators have rapidly developed in only a couple of months. It's gone from images that look like this <laughs> to this. And this was only made possible when in August Stable Diffusion got an open source release. Originally, Stable Diffusion could only depict the artists, celebrities and other notable people who were popular enough to be well represented in the model's training data. Basically, a Diffusion model can't generate images of specific subjects or styles that it hasn't seen very much of. At least, that was the case. Now enters Dreambooth. On the 26th of August, Google AI announced Dreambooth, a technique for introducing new subjects to a pre-trained text-to-image diffusion model. All that was required for the induction of a new subject was three to five images of a person, object, or style. Now, to be fair, the researchers at Google didn't release any code as they said it had the potential for societal impact and risked malicious parties using generated images for misleading the viewers. Nonetheless, 11 days later, an AI engineer comes along and releases the first public implementation of Dreambooth using Stable Diffusion, now rendering the process open source and available to everyone. everyone, everyone, everyone. <clears throat> Since then, there have been several dramatic optimizations in terms of speed, usability and memory requirements, making it extremely accessible to fine tune it on multiple subjects quickly and easily. Now often, You'll hear the blase analogies of it being like the printing press, film cutters, cameras, etc. But let's not forget, these technologies came slowly over decades. But we're not talking about a mere shift, we're talking about the complete displacement here. Computers and cameras took two decades to slowly phase over. It gave film cutters time to learn digital editing software, but now more and more creative jobs are getting reduced to just lines of code. Like, really think about this. The only people creating 2D and 3D works will be art directors typing away prompts into their little GUI, while the gap between junior and senior artists will only grow wider, with young artists struggling to break into the industry if they can at all. And with enough time, this technology will only expand and grow, grow it into 3D works, programming, creative writing, and much more, forcing us to work and do what? What are we going to do with this time? What do we transition to if all things creative are due to be taken over by AI? It's a big question that has to be asked and it's becoming more of a reality every day. Imagine, right? You create 10 images. They have a distinct look that you build a brand on the back of off. With this, you're able to make products with it. You're selling with it. It becomes your IP. Obviously, you can't copyright a style, but it's this aesthetic that is so intertwined with your brand, it's hard to separate the two. But since you put it in the internet, even though it was to advertise the product's existence, some geezer comes along and he says, hmm, I would really like that look for my projects. So let me take some of these images, I'm gonna feed it to my pet AI algorithm. It will learn to output images within the style of these drawings. So now when I say I want a picture of a pig in the style of X, I get a picture of a pig in the style of X. I get a picture of a pig in your style. And now that I have these remixes, it's time to sell these images, promote these images and drown out the artists the AI was trained on from public view. Now, you might think that this is just an individual who is stealing images of the internet, but that is simply not the case. All AI generators have very opaque data sets. However, there are some that have come forward with their methods. By leveraging the use of the data collected for study by universities or non-profit, authorized via the Intellectual Property Office's exceptions to copyright for non-commercial research and private study, companies are using these academic non-commercial data sets to train AI models, models that are used as products for profit. This is not a tool for artists or creativity, the current iteration of AI art seems to be an in-between space for what it truly intends to be, and that is a pure replacement. This harvesting process is offering a false copyright-free solution immediately, rather than the time required to arrive at, if not the same results, but any results at all, and it is easy to see why companies would be excited to get their hands on such a product. The reality is, there is a huge incentive for businesses to use this kind of thing. It's fast, it's cheap, it has little upkeep, and it makes pretty pictures. It's purely a final product. The whole process of art does not matter to these people. They will not need to pay the artists for that image. These generators are a washing machine of intellectual property. Simply put, they are laundering art. Now, not all industries will fully utilize this tech though, since although they can sell it, they cannot claim copyright to it. So if someone else happens to use it, there's no infringement done, which can actually be really damaging to clients who pay for the art and the licensing because they simply do not own what they pay for. 
or on the off chance it has been copywritten, just throw it back into the AI wash and take out your custom piece. Let's say you're not an artist. Why would you care how these AIs are trained and how they affect artists? Simple. The issue is that the image-based technology can be trained on your personal data, more specifically, your face. In an era of fake news and misinformation, an internet inundated with so much information that can even mislead reliable news sources, whatever they are, adding a fake image into this mess to act as evidence for conspiracies that have already shown their effect is a major risk. Or maybe that's too large scale and abstract, so let's pinpoint this, scale it down and focus on you, the individual. Say you somehow make an enemy of someone who wants to make your life an absolute misery. With just a handful of images, they can now fine-tune a model that put you in any awful situation that they can use to blackmail you or to get you fired. By combining those images with any of the emerging not-safe-for-work models trained on large quantities of adult videos, this is a disturbing inevitability. And currently there wouldn't be any recourse since there is no way to prove that these images had been faked and the police likely won't have any procedure to help with this. I don't think AI is the villain that it's currently poised to be, but it needs to be properly regulated. This current wild west is only for the advantage of those who makes these machines and at everyone else's detriment. In the end, the real fight with AI isn't whether or not it's art, but rather what data and information these machines are trained on. The artists should opt in, not out of data sets, and those that do should be compensated for when they do. We should not allow ourselves to get dragged into hand-wavy arguments of artists referencing other art or the genie is already out of the bag. Those are just designed to make the tech seem monolithic, something that can't be challenged. But it can and it should. When you consider that Stability AI's audio model, Dance Diffusion, won't be trained on copyrighted data since the fusion models are prone to memorization and overfitting, which could potentially result in legal issues, it is clear the tech in its current form, especially those trained to be overfit in Dream Diffusion, are art laundering and need to be overhauled.